Hello everybody and welcome to the Corona for Cinema 4D Sun and Sky How To video. In this one, we're going to show you how you can use the physically realistic and awesome looking Corona Sun and Sky system to light up your scenes. We're going to be working in an island resort like scene, which is going to be a perfect candidate to demo the workflow. And so as you can see right now, we have our interactive render running. Our island scene here is, well, it's in pretty much complete darkness here, save for these little light bulbs. And so let's go and let's use the Corona Sun and Sky system to light things up. Now, to place a Corona Sky in your scene, all we need to do is we need to go under the Corona menu up here and we need to bring in a Corona Sky object. Just by doing that, as you can see in the interactive render, there's now a sky lighting up our scene. So hurrah, everybody, mission accomplished. Now, if you select the Corona Sky object, you see its properties down here. These are used to dial in the look of your sky, but before we go and explore these, let's first also talk about how one brings in a sun onto our sky that we just created here. So to bring in the sun, well, all we need to do is we need to go under that Corona menu again and hit the Corona Sun button. This will place a Corona Sun in our scene as evident in the object manager here and also in our interactive render because as you can clearly see, there's sunlight in our scene now. All right, to manipulate the sun's position, now that we have a sun in our scene, we can go under the sun's properties and we can mess with its rotation values or its angle values. You can also input direction values if you so want to, but typically the rotation and angle values are a bit more intuitive to handle. Talking about intuitive controls though, if we jump out of our camera here, and if we locate the sun object itself, you're going to see that this viewport representation of the sun can be of immense use to you if you're trying to dial in the sun's position. So if we change our rotation and angle values here a bit, you're going to see that the sun object updates itself in the viewport accordingly, which means that you can use this visual representation here to have a better idea of where the sun is positioned on the sky. Even better though, you can use the handles on this object to interactively just move the sun anywhere you'd want to. So you can rotate it and you can adjust its angle. Now, with the sun object, we've got a couple of really interesting, really useful parameters here that we'd like to show you. First being the size parameter. So with the size parameter, what you're doing is you're deciding how small your sun will be or how big your sun will be. So with it, you can really fine tune the look of your scenes, especially those evening or morning ones where the sun is really visible. One option that you'll probably want to tweak in those scenarios as well is the textured option. When the sun is visible and close to the horizon, like in our example here, well then with the textured option turned on, the sun, when directly looked at, will look all that more realistic. So it's a really useful option for those morning or sunset scenes. Okay, now before we move on, we'll just reset the size parameter here by right clicking on it and then let's also move the sun a bit higher so that we'll have an easier time explaining what the next parameter that we'll cover does, which is the intensity parameter. With it, you'll be able to control how intense the sunlight is. So lower values will make the sun's effect less noticeable, while higher values will make the sun stronger. And those really are the basics of working with the sun object. You do have other parameters here to, for example, change the sun's color or change how the sun affects the scene, but those are usually not tweaked as often. Right, okay, so that's about it for the sun. Let's now take a look at some of the basic parameters for the sky as well. So with the sky, you can tweak its intensity with the intensity parameter. Higher values mean more illumination coming from the sky. Lower values mean less illumination coming from the sky. And then, if you want to further tweak the look and feel of your sky, you can mess with its turbidity, which will essentially let you control how clear or how overcast your sky is. Furthermore, you can adjust the altitude you're located at as higher values 
as you can see, change the appearance of the sky itself. The higher up you are, the clearer, bluer the sky becomes. And this is all simulated to look like it would in real life. So there's actual physical realism to it all. Then last, but definitely not least, you've got the volume effect parameter. And to demo it better, we're just quickly going to switch to a different scene here. We're now going to be in a mountain range, as you can see here. And so now, if you turn the volume effect to on, you'll add that nice atmospheric haze to the scene, where the more distant objects will get enveloped into that atmosphere, resulting in a really amazing looking scene. Naturally, you can use the scale parameter to scale the effect itself. Lower values will make it less noticeable, while higher values will make it more noticeable. All right, now, before we conclude the tutorial, let's just quickly talk about the sun linking as well. Every sky can be linked to a sun using the sun linking parameter here. Automatic means that Corona will try to link things automatically, and it'll help itself out by looking at the names of your suns and skies. So a Corona sky that's named Noon Sky would get linked to a Corona sun that's named Noon Sun. But you can also switch it to manual linking, which means you can input your own sun in here. So if we turn off the existing sun and we create a new Corona Sun object, well, we can now drag this new sun into the sun linking slot. Now, why is sun linking cool? Well, if, for example, you change the angle of a sun that's linked to a sky, well, that sky will adapt accordingly and realistically to the sun's position. So if your sun is really close to the horizon, the sky will look like it does in reality when the sun is close to the horizon. And so the sky will adapt to the sun it's linked to. Best thing, it's all simulated realistically based on real physical models. All that said, if you're not quite sure yet, why having multiple suns and multiple skies in your scenes can be of use to you. Well, if you're using Lightmix and you have multiple suns and multiple skies in your scene, that means you have different times of the day available at your fingertips, ready to go just by toggling between the setups in Lightmix. And because of that linking, all of the skies will adapt to the suns they're linked to. So basically, you only need to render once and you'll have all those different times of the day available in your single final render. Now, if you don't know how to use Lightmix though, no worries, we'll go over it in a later video. And as a small production tip, if you don't like using the Cinema for these menus to bring in Corona specific objects like the sun or the sky, you can always turn this menu into a toolbar that'll suit your workflow best. If however, you don't know how to do that? We'll cover the procedure in another separate tutorial. And with that, we'd like to thank you for your attention because we've now successfully went over all of the most relevant parameters that there are to the Corona Sun and Sky system. Thank you for your attention. We hope you've learned something new and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.